Nailing the Truth The Persecution of Christ, Socrates and the Modern Crusade Against Reality G'day punners, pull up a chair and grab a cold one because today we're diving into something deep something ancient yet uncomfortably modern You don't have to be a church-going, scripture-quoting, Bible-carrying Christian to see the patterns that have carried on from the days of Christ and Socrates right into our politically correct, woke-obsessed modern world. In fact, whether or not you believe in Christ or religion, I want you to imagine something. What if we were to take the persecution of Christ, who Christians call the truth and the light, and look at it as a metaphor for the relentless persecution of truth itself. I'm not just talking about ancient history here. No, I'm talking about what's going on right now, all around us, in the streets, on TV, in politics, in universities, and in everyday life. Bear with me. This old dusty tale of truth being crucified isn't a thing of the past, It's playing out in real time, and most of us are too busy scrolling through X or virtue signaling on Instagram to even notice. The truth has never been more hated, more shunned, or more censored than it is today. Pontius Pilate 2.0. Choose Barabbas, not the truth. Let's go back for a second to that moment when Pontius Pilate stood before the mob. On one side, he had Christ, the embodiment of truth, whether you see him as a divine figure or not. On the other side, a hardened criminal, Barabbas. And what did the crowd choose? Well, they did what most crowds do when faced with a hard choice of truth or comfort. They chose the easy way out. They picked Barabbas. Now let's fast forward 2,000 years. We're standing in the same kind of crowd, only now we're not in Rome and Jerusalem. We're in the middle of a woke society that can't handle the cold, hard truth. Just like in Pilate's day, people would rather choose anything, any lie, any distraction, any delusion, than face the truth. They'll free the criminal, the cheat, or the false prophet, but heaven forbid they stand up for what's real, what's uncomfortable, what's right. What is a woman and the Socratic method of madness? Take Socrates. The bloke made a career out of asking simple, pointed questions and tearing down the ridiculousness of the day's so-called wisdom. What did it get him? A cup of poison dead at the hands of a society that couldn't stand having its cherished beliefs questioned. Sound familiar? It should. Today, you don't need to be a philosopher like Socrates to get crucified for speaking the truth. Just ask any professor who dares to step outside the approved narrative in our universities. Go ahead, ask them a question as simple as, what is a woman? You won't get a straight answer. In fact, you'll probably get some convoluted, jargon-filled response that sounds like it was cooked up in a postmodernist lab experiment gone wrong. It's not that they can't tell you the truth. It's that they won't. And why? Because speaking the truth today has consequences. It means getting your head above the parapet. And we all know what happens when you do that. You get it lopped off. So instead of truth, we get equivocation. Instead of fact, we get feelings. And instead of the cold, hard realities that we used to build the Western world on, we get a collective delusion, one that's fed to us by the media, the politicians, the universities, and even some of our so-called leaders of industry. Persecuting truth, the modern day, crucifixion. The truth speaker today isn't literally nailed to a cross. Well, not yet anyway. But they're still crucified in a million different ways. Say something that doesn't fit the latest woke agenda 
and you'll find yourself deplatformed, censored, cancelled, or worse. You'll be branded a bigot, a heretic, or a conspiracy theorist. The method may have changed, but the result is the same. The mob still cries out for the blood of anyone daring to point out that the Emperor's starkers. What is it about the truth that people find so unbearable? Why do we hate it so much that we'd rather watch our society spiral into madness than face it? The answer's simple, really. The truth hurts. It holds up a mirror to our faces and forces us to see the world and ourselves as we really are. No one likes that. We'd rather live in a fantasy world where everyone is free to identify as whatever they want, where feelings matter more than facts, and where right and wrong are based on the latest social media trend, not on any timeless principles. The justice system pretending to care about the truth. Oh, but don't worry. We've got a justice system, don't we? One that's supposed to care about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, at least in theory. But have you had a good look at it lately? Our courts are meant to uphold the truth, but they're just as susceptible to the same woke nonsense as the rest of society. Free speech? Gone. Fair trials? Debatable. The notion that we can have a triggered... Beg your pardon. The notion that we can have a reasoned, rational discussion about real issues without someone getting triggered... Don't make me laugh. Don't believe me either. Have a look at the latest bloke who um, is a woman, apparently. Oh, anyway, the court found in favour that he was discriminated against his sex. Born a man, says he's a woman. Anyway, if you're expecting justice to be your last bastion of truth, you're in for a rude shock. The rot has seeped in here too. Judges, lawyers and politicians. They all play their part in bending the truth to fit the narrative du jour. Du jour. They'll swear to uphold justice, all while condemning anyone who dares step outside the lines. Nailing the truth and ourselves to the cross. It's a funny thing, really. We live in a time where truth should be easier to access than ever. We've got all the world's information at our fingertips, yet we choose to ignore it. We're not just nailing the truth to the cross anymore, we're helping hammer in the nails ourselves. And for what? To avoid offending someone? To avoid feeling uncomfortable? To avoid the responsibility that comes with knowing the truth? The truth will set you free, the saying goes, but here's the catch. Only if you let it. What we've done instead is allow darkness to creep into every part of our lives, to cloud our judgment, to make us question even the most basic realities, and we call it progress. Choose the truth, even if it hurts. Here's the real revelation. Just like the crowd back in Jerusalem, we have a choice. We can keep picking Barabbas, whatever version of him exists in our modern world, and go along with the crowd. Or we can choose the truth, even if it's hard. Even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it gets us cancelled, ridiculed or shunned. Look, no one's saying it's easy. It wasn't easy 2,000 years ago and it's not easy today. But we've seen the alternative. We've seen what happens when we reject the truth. We descend into chaos. We lose our grip on reality. We lose ourselves. So what will it be? Do we keep nailing the truth to the cross or do we finally stand up and defend it? Do we keep choosing the comfortable lie or do we step up and face the harsh, cold reality? The answer is is up to each of us. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the truth always finds a way to rise again, no matter how many times we try to bury it. God bless Australia, 
And may we find the courage to choose the truth before it's too late. Cheers, Senator Papa Hajikara Lambros. A disclaimer. If you're offended by this article, it's probably because you prefer Barabbas over the truth.